guys I'm back with another book call I'm gonna try to make this as quick as I can because my husband and I yes my husband and I tried to do one last Thursday and it just was kind of a hodgepodge mess so and I just now filmed the one and it yelled at me for being too long so I've got to try to not be so long-winded let's try that and I'll start out I was gonna do it like midway through the last video but I'll start out by saying hello and thank you to all of my new subscribers um, I was talking to my husband the other day and I said I don't know how many subscribers I have like I don't even think I have a hundred and it was 125 and I went oh okay so hi I'll try to maybe do some tag videos borrow some stuff from Steve Donahue um, that way it's not like once a month that I actually post something. So, we'll try. Um, I have books from Dollar Tree, Ollie's, Dollar General, Amazon, Book Depository, and the used bookstore. So, it's, it's a bunch. Um, and then I'll show you what I'm reading. Um, first ones are from the Dollar Tree. I tried to group them together this time. Uh, Grand Forks by Marilyn Hagerty. Uh, that's an Anthony Bourdain imprint of HarperCollins, or it is from. Basically, she was a food writer. She may still be. I'm not sure. Uh, for the Grand Forks Herald, um, what got me was that she apparently went viral with the snarky review of the Olive Garden and how terrible it is. So, here I'll give you a review. Go to Olive Garden for the breadsticks. Uh, Funny Girl by Nick Hornby. I have never read anything by Nick Hornby, but it's a dollar thick book, and it says it takes place in 1960s London, so I'll give it a try, and then maybe it may intrigue me to read his others. Then we have The Aviator's Wife by Melanie Benjamin. This one is about Anne Morrow, um, and she meets Charles Lindbergh, so it's a fictionalized story of her life. I had that on my wish list forever, never bought it, and I'm glad I didn't because I got it for a cheaper, a dollar. Divorce Express by Paula Danziger. My friend Amy read her books growing up, and I knew the author's name sounded familiar that we had talked about her, so I got this. I actually read it. It was cute, but it ended too abruptly. Basically, it's a girl who uh, her parents divorce when she's in high school, and she has to go back and forth. Her dad lives in upstate New York in Woodstock, and her mom still lives in the city in New York. So she has to get on a bus every weekend to go visit and back and forth. And she meets her best friend on the Divorce Express. Um, angsty teenage stuff sometimes, but I thought it was a super cute cover with the trains and stuff. So that's going in her box of books when I mail them to her. Hopefully soon I'll get off my lazy butt and do it. <laughs> Um, these are from Ollie's, um, Chanel Bonfire by Wendy Lawless, uh, basically nonfiction about a girl and her sister growing up with her crazy lunatic mother in New York City. Um, apparently she's neglectful, suicidal, has wackadoo breakdowns. This was on my wish list as well, but I waited and got it cheaper. It was only three bucks. We have The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane by Lisa C., which I was shocked to find this at Ollie's, seeing as how it just came out this year, and I was not even aware of its existence. So, it was four bucks, and I grabbed it. Can't tell you what it's about, but I do like Lisa C., and Snowflower and The Secret Fan is one of my favorite books. Etta and Otto and Russell and James by Emma Hooper. And this one is a cute, I was excited, it was a cute little signed copy. Got it at Ollie's for four bucks. And this is a woman who, when she's 84, I believe, 83, she decides she's going to walk to the ocean with her dog and just leaves her husband a note like, I'm gone, I might come back. <laughs> so, at a girl. Um, Evergreen by Rebecca Rasmussen. Um, this one takes place in 1938, the wilderness of Minnesota. Um, I don't know much more about that other than it's a husband and wife and child and he has to leave to take care of his father and I don't know if it's that he doesn't come back and she has to learn how to live by herself. Uh, Frog Music by Emma Donahue. She is the author of Room which I have tried to read and the perspective, the child's perspective I think is what made me struggle a little bit. I haven't seen the movie. I may go back and read the book. Don't know. Um, but this one takes place in 19, excuse me, 1870 San Francisco, uh, a burlesque dancer's best friend, um, uh, is shot dead and she's kind of going through 
piecing together things to figure out what happened. I don't know why it's called Frog Music. I guess you'll find out. It doesn't have great reviews, but two bucks. Uh, then we have The Rise and Fall of Great Powers by Tom Rackman. Rackman. This one was two dollars as well at Dollar General. The last two were Dollar General. I don't know if I said that. Um, this one I don't know much about other than it's a woman who goes traveling and meets a man named Thule who is an American owner of a last isolated bookshop in the Welsh countryside. So we'll see. Um, then we have The Alienist. I saw this on Art Schooling's channel. I had never heard of it for as old as it is. I had no clue it existed. It is supposed to be a um, TV show on one of the TBS, TNT, the T cable channels. They keep dragging their feet as far as when it's supposed to come out. I'm not sure when, but it's um, years 1896, city is New York. The hunt is on for a baffling new kind of criminal, a serial killer. And alienists are basically coroners. They call them coroners of their day. I don't know why, but I'll find out. And then I found the sequel. This one's from Amazon. It was no more than $4. I may have actually gotten it from eBay. I don't remember. But I found the sequel. Dusty. A sequel for $0.25. Cents. So the $0.25 cents made up for having to pay $4 for this beat up copy. So I'm tickled with that and um, then these this was from the used bookstore um the whole town is talking by fanny flag she wrote fried green tomatoes which is my favorite book of all times you should know this by now if you've been with me forever my um og subscribers should know that these are from book depository which i have found out is awesome at if a book comes out in the u.s in hardback you can generally find it either in paperback or a much nicer illustrated cover from Book Depository. I am totally fine with waiting and being patient for them to come overseas. But I got Hillbilly Elegy, Memoir of a Family and Culture in Crisis by J.D. Vance. I did read this last month. It is very good. It's going to my friend Amy. And I could relate to some of it as far as my grandparents lived in the country, in the holler, in Tennessee, so I could totally relate with some of the things he described as far as childhood and the things that he did growing up. And then Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. My cousin has a book group um, I'm a part of and she had thrown this one out as an idea to read at some point. Um, so I went ahead and picked up a copy since it was cheaper and it's a prettier cover in my opinion. And then the last one I have is The Last Castle, The Epic Story of Love, Loss, and American Royalty in the Nation's Largest Home by Denise Kiernan. She wrote The Girls of the Atomic City, which I absolutely loved and will be a keeper book for me, which is rare. Um, it's about Biltmore Estate in North Carolina, and I have not been there since I was a kid, but I love it and have good memories. One of these days when I can, you know, splurge 60 bucks to go visit preferably at Christmas, um, I would like to go back and take my husband because he's never been. Um, and it fascinates me because I always remember the bowling alley, the atrium, the kitchen. They probably have a lot more open now than they did when I was a kid as far as being able to see rooms. So I do want to go back. We'll see. That may be our Christmas present to each other because we discussed yesterday how we were going to have a $100 budget. So maybe go to Biltmore, um, like do a trip instead of a gift and a nice dinner and call that Christmas. Maybe get some stocking stuffers or something, something to open. Um, and then the ones I'm reading, I'll go through them fast because I'm at nine minutes and I don't want it to yell at me again. Um, my friend Amy and I are going to start reading Ruby by V.C. Andrews. We read them high school, college, and we're slowly but surely going through and reading the series again. And I believe Ruby was my absolute favorite, the Landry series. So we haven't picked a date to start it. Just we'll read it in October. Then my cousin's book group are reading The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. If I'm saying the last name correctly or if I'm remembering it correctly. Um, I'm about 70 pages into it and it's good. I have the hardback somewhere in my house and I can't find it. But luckily I have the ebook, and I'm finally getting around to it. Um, The Road to Jonestown, Jim Jones and the People's Temple, Jeff Gwynn. I started this two months ago. It's not that it's not good. I just haven't read much. 
So I'm hoping to get this one done in October. Uh, one of my lovely viewers told me about that. You know who you are. And then Caliban's War by James S.A. Corey. This was my sci-fi September pick and not sci-fi September anymore. So maybe. I'm only about 80 pages in and it's good. So I have lofty goals of reading. This one's almost 600 pages. This one is almost 500. Ruby, I'm sure it's like close to 400 and that service is close to 400. So a lot. I'll try. I'll try. Hopefully I'm going to get out of my rut that I've been in as far as reading. I am the world's worst at after work. I sit and watch YouTube videos. I need to get over that and start reading. That's it. I only have one book in the mail coming. It's the new Stephanie Perkins book. I was able to get it for less than seven bucks from Book Depository and it just came out last week in hardback. So I'm stoked about that. Don't have anything else planned to buy, but you never know. You may see me at some random point and I'll have a bunch or I'll have a few. Don't know. Like I said, this is my third time with this. Hopefully the third time's a charm. First time my husband and I, it's, it's just still on his phone. Let's just put it that way. It will never be edited. So this is its replacement. But uh, let me know if any of these I need to push up the stack and read them sooner rather than later. Um, what you're reading, how you're doing, how's your dog, how's your mom, how's your dad, how's everybody. But I will talk to you guys later. Bye.